Teams, let's take a look at our Delphi starting grid. Elio Castroneves, car number three. Tony Canan, car number 11. Buddy Reich, car number 15. Dario Franchitti, car number 27. Dan Weldon, car number 26. AJ Ford, Ford, car number 14. Sam Hornish Jr., car number 6. Vito Romero, car number 17. Brian Herda, number 7. Adrian Fernandez, car number 5. Darren Manning, car number 10. Townsend Bell, car number 2. Scott Sharp, car number 8. Scott Dixon, car number 1. Alex Barron, car number 51. Ed Carpenter, car number 52. Cole Schematura, car number 55. Felipe Giafone, car number 24. Mark Taylor, car number 13. Jacques Lazare, car 20. Nicolas Bazani, car number 12. Thomas Schechter, car number 4. So that's the Delphi starting grid. Jacques Lazare and Felipe Giafone both changed engines, and they will move to the back of the starting field. Speaking of Delphi, it's the chairman there that's going to give us those most famous words in racing. Race fans, please welcome back the chairman, CEO, and president of Delphi, Mr. J.T. Battenberg III, for the most famous words in motorsports. Team Delphi is proud to say, gentlemen, start your engine. And we thank you for joining us on the Firestone pre-race show on a day that just might see a new champion in the IRL. Will it be Buddy Rice, Dan Weldon, or Tony Kanaan? closest finishes in IRL history have all come on 1.5 mile tracks like here at Chicagoland. Take a look at those finishes for you. A 1.5 mile D-shaped oval here guys but the biggest thing of this racetrack is that the back stretch itself is not straight at all. 1700 feet but it actually has a curve in the middle of it and there's also a very large bump that might play a part in today's race. Field is already halfway down the back stretch, looking for the green flag this time by. Elio Castro Nevis is the pull sitter. Race analysis for you 200 laps, 300 miles, with a pit window as early as lap 46. So as they move toward the line, Scott, you picking anyone? Uh, Castro Nevis no moves start, ahead. No start, no start. No, no start. start, guys, no start. Well, that. Remember, there's a go zone back there for the start and restart, and Castro Nevis certainly got on the gas very quickly. We've got plenty of onboard cameras for you today, including uh, back on Thomas Schechter's car. He starts all the way in the back of the field. Scott Dixon's machine up in 14. Scott Sharp got a couple of good shots on Sharpie's car. There's Townsend Bell. You can look around. Darren Manning's car in 11th starting position. And of course, the guy that we're going to be keeping track of all day, and he'll be keeping track of the number three car, but the camera is on Tony Kanan's car. And again, Castro Nevis pulls a bit ahead. Flag, flag, it's his flag. start to call. The green flag is out as Elio Castro Nevis flashes across the line at Chicagoland. Paul, oh, that's a big departure from what Elio said he may do. Drew and I talked to him earlier. He said, I think I know Tony will take off, have the power, get in front of me. I'll follow him behind and just save fuel. Tony Kanan goes up to the high side. Just behind them, Dan Weldon goes to the high side of Dario Franchitti as he moves forward. Kanan leads the first lap. 
followed by Casper Nevis. They score Frankiti in third, Weldon fourth, and Rice in fifth. Tony Kanon now wants to get himself to the low side of the racetrack. His greatest challenge in the championship is that car right behind him. The red and white car, Klein Tools, the sponsor, Dan Weldon. And Dan Weldon, which quickest in most of the sessions here over the last two days, has been looking very strong. The rest of the field strings out. I'm sure Andretti Green Racing would like to get Frank Keedy around Elio Castro Nevis as possible to try and protect their two contenders up in the front. I'll just listen to that engine sing. 10,300 RPM. These engines run out for an entire race. Amazing. At Chicagoland Speedway, here are the guys that are on the move in the IRL IndyCar Series and those that are having a bit of a problem. A.J. Foyt, who had a great starting position in sixth place, dropped back to tenth on the start. This is a race that could, in fact, determine the championship in the IRL IndyCar Series. It's a bit of a reach. But if Tony Kanan can do well today and his two rivals, Dan Weldon and the Indy 500 winner Buddy Rice, have problems as early as the end of this race, Tony Kanan can pick up the champion's crown. In all likelihood, though, it goes on at least one more race to the California Speedway in Fontana in two weeks or even possibly on to the final race of the year at Texas Motor Speedway. Superstitious man, Kanan. Sam Hornish on the move now. Drops into fourth place. Right behind Elio Castro Nevis. Frankiti is faded to seventh. There are the two Marlboro Team Penske cars. The three cars, Castro Nevis. The six, of course, is Hornish, and that's Buddy Rice in 15. Panasonic car moving up on the high side. His teammate. Vitor Marin, number 17, is down there on the low side to help him. Vitor just muscles by. He certainly feels in his mind he's got a stronger car than his teammate, Buddy Rice. So he says, you know something? Let me ahead of you. Let me go have a look at this. A.J. Foyt, the fourth, has come back one position to ninth. Jamie, what's up with him? Well, A.J. started sixth. You guys prep up telling him right now, you're in a new position. Settle in, be patient, let the race come to you. So he's talking him through it, but AJ is finding himself in a new position. This is by far his best ever start in the IRL series. Yeah, he has been terrific this weekend. Look at this. AJ Foyt, the fourth, moving on Dario Franchitti down to the inside. Now, Franchitti has been fading a little bit since the start. Not sure what's wrong with his car or if there is anything wrong. Paul, A.J. Foyt, the fourth, finds himself playing in a whole different group, as Jamie is mentioning, and right now it's going to be new to him. He's got to learn some of these guys, learn their characteristics, learn their traits, find out where they run on a racetrack so he can feel comfortable around them, and also they have to start feeling comfortable with A.J. Foyt, the fourth, around them because they've not seen him very much earlier this year. Now, don't forget, the fourth is uh, the champion from the... The uh, IRL Menards Infinity Pro Series. He knows how to get it done. Where are we at with the car, Dario? Where are we at with the car? Now they're talking to Dario Franchitti, trying to figure out what the situation is with that car as Ed Carpenter goes below him and Dario fades to 10th. Jerry Punch. And guys, you heard a moment ago that was Kyle Moyer asking Dario Franchitti about the car. I just asked Kyle if you guys have any ideas that he hasn't said a word, Doc. In fact, our throttle tracing shows that he is flat out. He has been flat on the floorboard since they waved the green flag wide open with the throttle, but continues to drop back now being shown in the ninth position. So we'll keep an eye, too, on Dario Franchitti and uh, see what may be up with his machine. Franchitti, remember, has mastered the one-mile ovals and has been spectacular this year with two victories. Tony Kanan, Dan Weldon, Buddy Rice, Elio Castro Nevis and Vitor Mira. Those are the top of the field. Tony Kanan is leading the 11th race 
of this season. Can he continue? We'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC station. Back with a great crowd at Chicagoland Speedway for the Delphi Indy 300. We're already 19 laps into the run. The field still very closely packed, and they're averaging 210.7 miles an hour. Tony Kanaan is the leader. His teammate and closest rival in the points championship is in second place, Dan Weldon. But look at the yellow number four car, the Pennzoil-sponsored car of Thomas Schechter. He is the gorilla in this field. He started back in 20th place. He's now running right around 8th place. Todd Harris? Well, you're exactly right, Paul Page. Earlier in the meeting, Senior Vice President of Operations Brian Barnhart told these guys, listen, fellas, the first 70% of this race doesn't matter. Get in line, work together, don't go three wide. Well, Thomas Schechter must not listen too well because he is already up seven positions, and his teammate, Townsend Bell, has jumped up five positions from his starting position. Schechter has also had a fast lap at 215.2 miles an hour. You watch Townsend Bell down there. He's fighting it a little. Reached down for a gear. Comes outside, up alongside Hornick. And behind LAO. Schechter rides the high line. That's where he's made all his passes since the beginning of this race. During practice, they spent a lot of time making their car work up on the high side. Cars dart back and forth constantly. Big bump on the back stretch as they come off at turn two. You'll see it from time to time. There's no question that it's there. Now, right now, Schechter has nowhere to go. He might have a faster car from these guys in front, but he cannot make a move with it just simply because the cars are fanned out in front of him. He just passed over that bump. Canon, Weldon, Rice, they're the front three, and they run single file. And assume that's burning fuel on Canon, but uh, helping both Weldon and Rice. Jerry Punch? Guys, I just talked to Michael Andretti. He said there are no team orders. Repeat, no team orders, no restrictions or restraints on the front two guys who are one, two in the points. That being Tony Canon and Dan Weldon. He said, I told the guys I'm not going to take a championship or a win away from either one of you, but you got to race smart, guys. Don't take each other out. And the best place to be safe here at Chicago Land, as competitive as it is, is up front, exactly where you are. Well, forcing these two would be the job of the guy third in line there, Buddy Rice in the number 15 car, the Ray Hall Letterman stable. If he could uh, push enough pressure onto them, and there'd be a problem where the two Andretti green cars tangle, which we certainly have seen with other teams before, that would give him a decided advantage. Whoa, did you see that? Oh. All the cars in the back are getting that dirty air from the big cluster of cars in the front, Paul. Driving in the back section when they're together like this, man, I got to tell you, is one of the toughest things to do. You never know where your car is going to land on the racetrack next. Thomas moves for the outside. Want to show you this with Felipe Giafoni and Costa Matura. That was that puff of smoke that we saw just a second ago. Koski's car in the bottom, sliding up into Giafoni's car on the high side. As I mentioned, very difficult to keep your car on the low side with all those cars in front with that disturbed air. Buddy Rice moves to the high side. There's Dixon and Koski back at the front. Very fitting that the one, two, three is Kanan, Weldon, and Rice, just the way they are in the championship. You watch Kit Weldon right now. Every time Rice seems to have a little bit of a look, he just starts to run his car a little bit high, pushing Rice on the outside going through the turn. Now Rice back down to the low side to protect his spot from Castro Nevis. And Schechter still looking for any line that'll get him toward the front. In the middle, going to go high. Firestone telemetry from Thomas Schechter's car. You can see the throttle right there, 100%. He's not taking his foot off at all all the way around even in traffic and this is a key thing for him the tire temperatures and pressures right in the middle of the green zone just about perfect he'll probably do no changes on the car during the first stop because i'm sure he likes it right now and look at those uh, g's load up he got 4.1 at one point there as we talked a moment ago watching weldon creep up every once in a while we hear from race control right now that 26 has been warned not to creep his car up coming off the turns 
Schechter moves to the outside. Going to try it again. His last five finishes have been less than spectacular. And remember, he's had problems in the pit. Right there, watch 26. The second car, the red and white car, Weldon, goes high to protect the spot going in. Had to come down, get back down to the white line on the left-hand side over here to protect the run that Rice was going to be able to get and Schechter. Talking about Thomas Schechter, Scott. Uh, contract done for next year. Does he need this to be a spectacular run? Well, it's not signed, but I hear they've agreed on it, so it looks like he'll be back there again next year. And you know something? I don't sure there's anybody else there that's available that would actually fit the bill for Panther right now. Hey, guys, a moment ago, Danny Weldon just asked for permission to be able to go around his teammate. Tony Kanaan said the pressure he's getting from Schechter may be a little too much. Michael Andretti gave the permission, said get a run. And if you want to go on by Tony, maybe you can leave this draft and pull away. So watch for the second-place car on Weldon to make a move if he can get a run. Rice comes down inside Schechter, continuing what is a battle now for third place. Schechter all the way from 20th position up here to run with the leaders in just 40, 34 laps. And you got a glimpse there, too, of the 14 car of A.J. Foyt, the fourth. He's up there as well. So it continues to be a tight field here today with Tony Kanaan looking for a championship crown and the pit stops coming up very shortly. Coming up next, see two of the stars who led Team USA to victory in Athens, Yolanda Griffith and the Sacramento Monarchs take on Lisa Leslie in the L.A. Sparks. Next, right here on ABC Sports. Canon, Weldon, Rice, Mira, Schechter. It seems to change every lap. We're at Chicagoland Speedway, the Delphi Indy 300. And now Rice is giving Weldon a run for his money. Rice is down there trying to protect that low line. The Penske cars are running back in the field right now. Hornish at ninth and Elio Castro Nevis at 13th. And part of the reason may be this, Scott. Touching the tires, the right front and left rear. You see a little puff of smoke coming off those cars. And what ends up happening is a possible cut tire. But both the drivers in the pit lane will certainly know because they have that telemetry system which will show their tire pressures, Paul. And Todd Harris, uh, they've uh, asked Sam Hornish to look over Elio's car. Yeah, that's the benefits of having a teammate like Sam Hornish Jr. They asked him to slide back, check out Elio's tire. Elio thought they touched. Sam didn't think so. He slid back, but Elio said the problem was he felt like he was losing tire pressure. So whether he's not getting that information off of telemetry, I don't know, but they will certainly check it when he comes in at lap 42 is what they're saying, or 48, excuse me, for Elio Castroneves. Well, they're certainly capable through telemetry of watching the tire pressure in each of the tires. And that was a major breakthrough when it came several years ago because it helps anticipate problems and makes everything a little bit safer. Rice, Rice moves to the front. Weldon has given him a boost. And now we have the first change in the lead as Buddy Rice moves out front. Schechter comes too. What's going on with Tony Kanaan? Tony Kanaan's car is changing. You heard him lift off the throttle in the middle of the turn, probably not able to carry the speed around like he was before. Possibly the tires are starting to have some wear. Cars change with fuel load. The weight changes. Dan Weldon up there on the right. Not going to have any of it. He's going to go for the lead. Schechter now giving him a boost. Rice is going to stick down on the low run. And now Weldon picks up the lead for the first time. So three lead changes, three leaders. Schechter has just been awesome to watch, though. What a wonderful performance he's given us. He is due into the pits in two laps. Again, please don't go three wide. They do it again. Mira now making a move on Tony Kanaan. The 17 car blue and white sitting up high. 
And it looks like Frankiti has got it going pretty good again. Schechter onto the pit road as scheduled. Todd Harris. Well, Thomas Schechter says that he's going to come in this next turn, and all he's getting is the front wing fuel and tires. Thomas Schechter, he's usually very talkative. They say on the track, it's taking plenty of time not to say anything. And he gets a great set, he's out. Scott Goodyear circled those uh, two adjusters as he comes out alongside, but just ahead of Sam Hornish. The adjusters that changed the front wing angle. Elio Castro Nevis on the pit road. So is Alex Barron. Reset your fuel. Reset your fuel. Let's watch Rick here. Watch Rick. And Rick Reinemann waves Elio Castro Nevis out from the right front position on the car. The crew chief, Weldon, still the leader. Now here comes Rice, Mira. Townsend Bell and Dario hey, Franchitti. Okay, reset fuel. Reset fuel. Reset speed. Listening to Buddy Rice's radio. Buddy, Buddy Rice very pleased with the car thus far. No changes, a very clean pit stop for Buddy Rice. Meanwhile, right below him, they wait on Tony Kanaan, the points leader, to come down pit road. A 7-Eleven machine for Andretti right Green Racing. Right Remember the final five laps prior to him leading, he had backed out of the throttle. The car had become very neutral. They make a slight air pressure adjustment. No oh, wing change. Oh, they hold. 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 Oh, and that clears out the Andretti Green Pits for Dan Weldon, who is the leader. He's maintained the lead during these stops, and he's now heading down for pit road. Now what AJ, AJ Boyd, the fourth, having the ride of his life right now. He came in, new tires filled up on fuel, and out he went. And you guys, he came in in fourth position. Unbelievable. Oh, okay, uh, that's great for no four. Open. Wide open. There this guy, just jump in the wall here now. Five, four, three, right on the back. Well, you heard Tony Cotman talking to his driver, and Dan Weldon said the, the longer they ran, the better the car get. Got the Jim Bean, Klein Sewell crew, great pit stop. Remember his teammate with eight points on the field. Another great stop for the Andretti Green crew. That's Adrian Fernandez that gets out just ahead of Dan Weldon. And Andretti Green has left out their fourth car in the team, Brian Herta. He stays out, so does Koski Mitsura, the 55 car we're looking at. So as Herta will come down onto the pit road, that'll give the lead over to Mitsura. And Brian Herta heads for the pits right now. So it's Mitsura, but he has not stopped since the start 55 laps ago. And now Mitsura comes onto the pit road. That should turn the lead of the race over to Adrian Fernandez, the Mexican. And guys, wing adjustment on Brian Herta's car. The exit side machine. Another very good pit stop. Less than nine seconds for George Close and company, but a major front wing change for Brian Herta. Koski Metzer now coming in. One of the last drivers to come in on this. So everyone now thinking about fuel economy mileage and lapping out of sync. But as you can see on this pit stop, everyone extremely deliberate about making sure that fuel nozzle comes out before they release the driver, Paul. Well, Scott Goodyear, maybe the uh, conversation and driver's meeting did some good. As we mentioned, one of the most strongest message I've ever heard. And you know something I would say right now, some guys are maybe even doing a short fill. Fernandez possibly, maybe they did a time stop, Paul, because they were further down pit lane, but they made up a lot of time during that last stop. Adrian Fernandez picks up the lead. Buddy Rice right behind him. Don't forget what a great drive Fernandez gave the car at Kentucky. Early in his first season, scoring a victory. So Fernandez, Rice, Tony Kanan drops into third, and Dan Weldon's right there to worry him. While on the inside, it's the 17 car of Mira trying to get up and help Buddy. Will they be able to stay like this? I don't think so.
Tomorrow night, it's the regular season premiere of Monday Night Football. Brett Favre and the Packers battle Jake Delahome and the Panthers. Monday Night Football, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, right here on ABC Sports Championship Television. Tony Kanan, he's the man looking for a championship today in the Delphi Indy 300. It's a reach, especially a reach when you consider that he has dropped back into the field now on the start of the race. He, uh, start of the race, he led in the early going, but then after the pit stops with a blindingly fast stop, Adrian Fernandez took the lead, now being challenged by Vitor Mirez. So within this mix for the championship, there's also a lot of guys who just want to show off and win a race, especially with a bunch of money on the line here at Chicagoland. And back in the field, there is Buddy Rice. He sits uh, fourth, third, and Dan Weldon. They are both still contenders in this championship battle. Jerry Punch, what's the story on Fernandez? Well, Paul, the popular Mexican driver who won at Kentucky, said they're feeling it here today. John Ward, the engineer who calls the pit stop, said, just like Kentucky, we had an outstanding pit stop, less than eight and a half seconds. We did not short fail. We filled it completely full, and we're getting outstanding fuel mileage. Plus, we're leading the race here at Chicago Land. Maybe a replay of Kentucky, possibly win number two for the Mexican driver. Just 30 laps now to the halfway point. They have been green all the way, despite some of the closest racing we've ever seen. Stuff like this. Look at Mira go low on Hornish. Back to second behind Fernandez. Buddy Rice has his fingertips on third, but it's being contested from behind by, well, Weldon for one. And what looks like a whole group, including up on the high side there, Dario Franchitti. So whatever was the problem, they seem to have fixed it with that change in, uh, in pressures on the tires. We'll take you back. This is Townsend Bell. Just a few laps ago, Townsend Bell trying to squeeze in between Philippe Giafoni and the wall, but Giafoni obviously doesn't see him coming and just grazes the wall on the right-hand side. Another one coming up with Scott Sharp on the left-hand side. Delphi car number eight going into... Right now, up into Dixon, just touching a little bit and moving on. They're not going to get away with this too many more times, Paul, before we'll end up with a yellow. There's uh, on board with Scott Sharp. You get to look right at him. He runs 14th right now. 14th. But did you see that interval behind the leader? A little over a second. Look at that. That's the entire field in front of him. Watch his hands just working right there. His hands are Firestone telemetry from Scott Sharp. You can see, you can hear his off the throttle down to 25% there for a moment. Now he's back on it, going down the front stretch. Interesting to watch the G's when he goes through the turns. Stuck in traffic, car's not working the greatest for him. He gets off the gas a little bit. Elio Castroneves. He's been suffering here. He's back in 15th place. Todd? Well, you guys remember back on lap 40 when Elio Castroneves and his teammate Sam Hornis Jr. touched. He wasn't sure if they touched or not. They did touch. Here's a Firestone Firehawk. This is what it's supposed to look like on the sidewall. This is the tire they took off Elio Castroneves' complete stripping of the cosmetics. And I'll tell you, Scott Goodyear, your favorite place to eat, the Waffle House. This thing's still hot enough. You can cook a few of your eggs on there. <laughs> I've never taken them, but I'm going to have to. Aren't I, Paul? Uh, you are. Fernandez, Mira Rice, top three. There's Elio. Not to slight Elio, he does have a mathematical chance at the championship, but it is so far outside, he'd have to garner every available point in these next three races. This is Schechter and Weldon just a moment ago. Hornish down there on the inside, number six. How did they get away with that? These guys have just got nerves of steel. As we mentioned before, Brian Barnhart said, guys, let's not go three wide. Let's get 75% of this race done and over with. I don't think one of those drivers ended up listening in the meeting, Paul. Schechter moves around on the high side behind Tony Kanan, who sits in sixth place right now. Here is the lead of the race. Adrian Fernandez and Vitor Mira. 
Hernandez has been very powerful. Is he looking at his second win this year? We'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC station. Adrian Fernandez at the front, but look at this ride with Thomas Schechter. There's the front four in front of you at over 212 miles an hour. And Schechter's going to try and make it three wide. Eighty-four laps complete. You're approaching the halfway point. One hundred laps would be the halfway. Scott Goodyear, we're talking guys that have been solid at speed for that entire time. That's got to contribute to mental fatigue. Certainly wears you down when you're always conscious of what's on the top side and below you. Remember, you're always listening to the spotter who's in your ear all the way around. Anytime these guys are side by side, somebody's in their ear, Paul. Very difficult. It's just not a walk in the park that these guys are out here for. And you see Thomas Schechter consistently using the gear shifter all the time to make sure that he has the opportunity to stay in the correct RPM. His right hand will end up being the hand that actually does all the shifting. Got to be tough to drive and have somebody talking in your ear at the same time. Mira goes to the low side. Battle for the lead. Battle for the championship right now. Buddy Rice is in third. Dan Weldon is fourth. Tony Kanan is in eight. And the caution comes out. Report. Well, you see the whole field, so the caution comes out for debris. So for the first time today, with 87 laps into the record book, they're going to slow it down. Now, since the last stop, 34 laps. Do you split team strategy now? Pit well, one of your cars? You're right in the very middle of the window, basically. So I would think that a lot of guys might take the opportunity to put fuel in because if you do it under green, Paul, you will lose a lap here very quickly. If it was me, I'd be pitting. So we'll see what the teams decide. To do is you, you figure out what your fuel tank can carry. And then you uh, subtract that back from the uh, number of laps in the in the race. And you're constantly recalculating that. They were averaging 207.7 miles an hour before the yellow. That flag, of course, indicates that the pits are closed. They'll stay closed until the entire field packs up behind the pace car. The fans here are getting a great show today at Chicagoland Speedway and the Delphi Indy 300. Fernandez, Rice, Mira, front three, but the top 10, if not the top 15, has been changing constantly. So Adrian Fernandez will lead the field down to the pits. And Jamie Little, here Buddy's they come. come around you. Thomas Schechter coming in right now, guys. No changes as of right now. We'll get back to you and let you know everything that's going on. We're running. Refueling hose on the right, bent hose and jack on the left, and Schechter's on his way, Jerry. Fernandez and Rice pitting as they both lead. Short field, short field. Let's check in with Todd. Well, Dan Weldon came in, had a fantastic pit stop, and almost had a near collision with Buddy Rice, but Buddy got the jump on him as they exited pit row. Paul? Yeah, but something going on there with Fernandez's car because... Uh, They've got a problem. They have to use manual jacking. There's something wrong with his air jack. Exactly, Paul. The air jack would not work, could not get the car lifted up. It came in and put the put the air impact in it, and apparently it would not lift the car. They had to go with a manual front and rear jack to lift the car. So uh, apparently a problem here and also another problem up pit road, guys. Yeah, Barron uh, came out of the pits and only had three Practice tires. coming in turn four. They do require four. In turn four. So Barron will go back. They'll get that onto the left rear. So Fernandez, though, a blindingly Take fast time, first stop. We got the link, right? And then it turns into an absolute mess on okay, the second stop. And just that easily, they get him going. There is Fernandez. This was the stop. As you can see, the mechanical jack is down on the front because the car was not lifted by the hydraulic jacks, which is operated by the air hose. You can see the individual right there on the front. 
One of these is used for the front and the rear. These guys then have them at the ready in case the hydraulic jacks fail. And so here's how they came out from this second stop with Weldon, the first car out. And then say, look at that. You had Dixon, you had Mira, Kanan, and Schechter came. And Hornish Jr., Frankiti. These pit stops, second round now, no problems. Maybe the uh, hard conversation at this morning's driver meeting had some effect on these drivers. Starting on Monday, the benefactor will hand over $1 million. He's just looking for the player who has what it takes to step up and take it. Who will pass his test for success? The benefactor premieres Monday only on ABC. Well, out of the stop, Stan Weldon picks up the lead of the race, followed by Buddy Rice. There are two contenders in the points battle. Scott Dixon with maybe his best ride of the year thus far. Tony Kanan, the current points leader. Mira, Thomas Schechter, Sam Hornish Jr., and Dario Franchitti. That's how they'll line up coming back to the green flag. Rice goes high on Weldon. They'll be side by side on the back straight. Remember, this first lap back to green is critical for everybody. They race very hard at this point. Weldon continues his lead. Rice still works the high side. But I would think, Scott, that given where that stop occurred, under that yellow and the way they've run thus far that now getting fuel mileage maybe only going one more stop is the uh, the real key to the whole thing key thing is always a fuel mileage as you're talking about as you watch right now the car in front with rice's car just dancing around over those bumps through the turns on the right hand side and the high side right now watch up there you can see tony Kanon starting to stick his nose and remember we just had a pit stop probably some changes to the car maybe some improvements to the car that's what he's looking for Tony Kanan wants to get back into this fight, but remember these two guys, Rice on the left and Weldon on the right, they would have to finish down in the field, ninth and 11th, respectively, if uh, Tony Kanan wins for Tony Kanan to have a championship. So given our current situation, almost certainly the championship is going to go on to the next race, if not the next two. Jamie Little. Well, Paul, in that last pit stop, we saw Alex Barron have a little mishap. Max Jones, managing director, said Jim Allen, the left rear tire changer, said he had it on. As soon as Alex was released to go, it fell off. It was just a miscue and a mishap. But he's back out in 21st right now. Well, at least it came off right away and not on the race course. That saved them a lot of trouble. You now, they talked about the pressure earlier. In in this race, Paul, on the drivers, and it's also on the teams, and the further the race continues, the more pressure on the teams to help their driver improve their positions during the pit stops. The 26 is Dan Weldon. The 15 is Buddy Rice, the Indy champion. Part of the three-car battle that is in the fight for the championship. Part of this, too, is can you get a partner? Can you get somebody up? to come up behind you and to, to help you move forward, help you aerodynamically. Dan Weldon, the leader. Let's hear how he feels about himself in his own words. My name is Dan Weldon. I grew up across the pond in Emberton, England, 50 miles from London. Away from the track, I enjoy shopping for clothes. It's all about the style. I always need my daily fix of English breakfast tea. It reminds me of home. My motto is, if you look good, you feel good. Baby, I look good. I was born June 22nd, 1978. I currently make my home in Indianapolis. The one thing I want people to know about Dan Weldon is, I'm a neat freak. Me? 
what I want you to know about him is he is one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. He is just straightforward. Right now, he is doing battle with Buddy Rice. Buddy Rice got a nose ahead across the line last time by. But they continue to go side by side, lap after lap. Todd Harris. Well, Paul, interesting verbiage coming out of Buddy Rice Pitts moments ago. They said, hey, Buddy, don't worry about Dan Weldon. This week, he is the Andretti Green Rabbit. Scott, what do you make of that? You know, the key thing right now for these guys is to stay safe. I'm seeing some stuff out there right now where guys are actually just going almost four wide. And I got to tell you, it's making me just a little nervous that we might have something happening here before the end of the day. I wouldn't think if the radio call was from Ray Hall Letterman to Buddy Rice, that it's uh, that Weldon is a rabbit. I wouldn't think they'd put him out there as a rabbit. He's in the championship. They they can't afford to stick him out. I wouldn't think. Weldon's concerned about winning the race right now for himself, simply from the fact that he knows that he still has a hope in the championship if there's still a couple of races remaining. Well, Adrian Fernandez, after leading early on after a great pit stop, then has a disastrous pit stop. He's now 19th. What's going on down there, Jerry Punch? Well, Paul, the air jack problem on Fernandez's car was an onboard problem, and I am told that John Ward says they will have to manually lift the car for what should be their final stop, and the crew estimates that manual lifting will cost them between four and five seconds on their final stop. Probably takes them out of any contention here today. 106 laps complete of 200. We're past the halfway point, so it is an official race regardless, but uh, with this beautiful blue sky overhead and great temperatures, wonderful day, this is going to go the distance. If you get a chance, try fuel three if you get a chance. Look at Mark Taylor sitting back there in the uh, number 13 car driving for Greg Ray, who stepped out of the driver's seat earlier in the season to manage his team. Look at this battle. Taylor just sticks it right down the middle. A place where he's not run very much this year, along with Scott Sharp, who's doing a great job, who's just on the Delphi car that we're riding with right now in eighth position. Spoke with him earlier today, and he says, you know, it's great to come here in race morning knowing that I'm in the middle of the field and I'm going to be racing. And yeah, when you look over and you see Mira's 17 car, you know that you're doing good. Mira is right up now behind Tony Kanaan. There's Vitor. We keep saying that he's close to winning, but now when you look down the list of drivers he's one of a long list of names who are all very close to winning rice and weldon continue on point scott dixon great run sits up there side by side with schecter Look at it. Every lap it changes. Jamie Little. Paul Scott Dixon started 14th, and as you can see, he has got his work cut out, but he has moved up to third. And I just asked Chip Ganassi, what are you telling Scott up there right now? Well, first of all, Toyota came with some new pieces this weekend in the engine, so he said he felt he could get to the front, so we said, fine, if you can go to the front, go there. He left a little bit on the table in qualifying, but uh, he's pretty happy with the car right now. I just came up to Chip. I said, what are you telling him? He said, I'm telling him to get to the front. What else? Well, he's trying. Oh, well, look at this. This is uh, just ahead of Schechter. That's Horny's just ahead of you. And it was Weldon. Ed Carpenter on the pit road. What this one is for. Well, he's been off a lap or so here, so we'll have to see what goes on with this. Obviously, some tires are going to go on, and then they might make some changes on the car. But Caution comes off. out. Oh. Caution comes out. Townsend Bell. And Townsend Bell's in trouble. He rides the wall. Caught the wall going into three. Interesting to see his right hand's pushed on the button. He's already communicating back to the pit lane, saying, guys, I'm all right. Fortunately, the car comes to a stop low off of the racing line. The rest of the field did get slowed down. And we've got our first uh, real contact with the wall today. And it's Townsend Bell, who was having a great race going. 
And we'll take a, a look at what happened at Townsend Bell in just a moment. Also, the question comes up, is this a time to go in and refuel it again? We'll see. They uh, get uh, Bounds and Bell's car up, and the rest of the field comes in for a stop. Jamie? Scott Dixon, the number one car, came in. He said he's a little loose, but he's good in traffic. He's going to stop. Tires are new, and he's out. Todd? Buddy Rice going to top it off only with fuel. No tires. And that is five seconds. Let's check in with Todd. Exact same situation. For Dan Weldon, the only problem for Dan Weldon was his teammate Tony Kanaan was just ahead of him, so it made his exit a little more tricky. Paul. So on those stops, Kanaan, Manning, Castro Nevis all move up. Taylor, Lazier, Sharp, and Point the Fourth. Uh, uh, both uh, they drop back in the field. Townsend Bell, they're still uh, still trying to get that car cleared off of the racetrack. Dan Weldon, 26 car, one of those in this championship fight. And we'll go back and show you what happened to Townsend Bell. Guess what? Remember Nazareth two weeks ago? Well, Scott Sharp was in it with Bell. You can see up on the top of your screen right there, the yellow and red car, Scott Sharp, had some problems coming off the previous turn, was high. Townsend Bell tries to make it in there. Now watch Sharp going down the car just in front of you right here, going through the turn, starts to get high. He's already in the third lane up in the gray. Well, now Townsend Bell gets a run. He thinks, I'll go high. I'll get a few of these guys. And right now, not enough room in between Sharp and also the wall. Townsend Bell, very disappointed. Now, mentioned Nazareth two weeks ago. This was the situation. Exactly. Townsend Bell on the inside of Scott Sharp this time. I spoke to both these guys just a couple of days ago. They said, you know something? I can't understand how it happens. Townsend Bell heard from his spotter. He said, you're clear to go through. He's going to let you by in turn three. Scott Sharp never heard that message. Well, so Scott Sharp uh, been talking to his crew back and forth uh, about the fact that he's engaged uh, with Bell again. The good news for Sharp is that his car is still in action and currently running 15th. Well, with Felipe Giafoni uh, sitting out in front of the field and Tony Kanan still very much in this fight in the top 10. Before uh, the death of Tony's father, his father told him his only son just two things. Take care of your mother and younger sister and don't stop racing. After having been diagnosed then with cancer and being told he had only three months to live, Tony's father actually lived for another four years. It taught Tony to believe. Even though Tony's family was well to do, his father's death meant that Tony at age 13 had to take on responsibilities far greater than his age. We lost all the money that we had so I had to go I quit school, I went to work for a go-kart factory. I would make money to support my family, and then I would race for free for the factory. So I kept racing like that. At the age of 17, Kanan moved to Italy to further his career. Not able to speak the language and not old enough to rent a car, Tony made his home at the team shop. They would close the shop at six o'clock with me inside and then they will reopen the shop at seven o'clock the next morning. So I had a bed and a PlayStation on it so I could play. And uh, it was nights that, uh, you know, I would, I would think twice why I'm doing it and, and, and why it had to be so hard for me. And I'm like, why me? Why did you pick me? I used to get really mad. And, and then those kind of things just make you grow. With help from others, including his hero, Brazilian world driving champion Ayrton Senna, Tony was able to move up the ladder, eventually earning a ride and championship in the Italian Formula Alpha Boxer Series in 94. Ironically, that same year, Senna was fatally injured in a crash during a Formula One race in San Marino, Italy. For my country, it was terrible. I remember nobody worked for a week. I never saw so many. I didn't cry when my dad died and I cry when Ayrton died. So that's how serious it was, so. Uh... Now, 10 years later, Kanan is on the verge of becoming a champion at the highest level of American open wheel racing. He got married last November to wife Danielle and says she has made him a better race car driver. I don't go out to 
to a nightclub anymore if I do I go with my wife so I'm, I don't need to look for chicks anymore I don't I don't chase them anymore and then it just it just changed the whole the whole prospect and then you're more calm you do like more uh, old guy type of thing stay home break a dinner go to a movie and uh, and then you start and it's coincidence or not things you start to get better and better and better for Tony Kanan life is good and life is complete I would say professional wise I'm complete do I want more yes because as long as I live I'm gonna be trying hard and harder and hard but if for God's sake something happened that if I die I'll die happy I would say that if I cannot race anymore I would find something else that's gonna make me happy. Race is my life. It's definitely my life. But there is a life beyond racing too. Well, in that search for a championship for Tony Kanaan, right now he is in sixth place. They just came back three laps ago to green flag racing. Felipe Giafoni led for the uh, first couple hundred yards, then to be overhauled by Dario Franchitti. And then here came the rest of the group. So now it's Buddy Rice, Weldon, and Hornish, the top three. You can see Giafoni and his 24 Purex car sitting up on the high side there, still trying to keep up with that fight. Good run for him. Dario Franchitti has been up there as well. And his teammate, Brian Herta. This race continues the way it's been right from the start. Koski Matsura, he slowed down. <laughs> Here's an interesting thing. Koski Matsura, who slowed down now, ran the target fastest lap in the race at 216.6 miles an hour. Now he's on the apron and turns three and four. If he can get it into the pit lane, we will not go yellow. If he does not have enough power and speed or necessarily rolling speed right now, then the yellow will come out. Yeah, it looks like he's far enough around, though. There he is on the entrance to the pit, so we will stay green. Rice and Weldon. Rice currently third in the points. Weldon second in the points. They trail Tony Kanan. Rice, Indy 500 champion. <laughs> He's right. <laughs> if you're scared, get out. Dario Franchitti on the pit road now for Franchitti. And a lot of frustration, Paul. Franchitti was among the leaders when the green came back out a moment ago, and the car abruptly slowed. He yelled, gearbox, gearbox, fourth gear only, and it's gotten slower and slower, and they haven't been able to resolve the problem. And I think. Just a moment ago, Kyle Moyer said, unfortunately, partner, we're going to have to park it. We just cannot finish. So Dario Franchitti, a two-time winner this year, will climb out of the Arca X machine here with still some 73 laps to go. And Doc Punch, they talk about gearbox here because you have to keep the car up on the gearbox in fourth, fifth, and sixth gears to keep the engine in the power band. I believe that might have been the same problem with Kotsky Masura. He probably ended up having a gearbox problem. Back at the front, Rice Weldon pulling away now from third place. Third place is now Tony Kanan. So that's the whole championship battle there at the front. We have two races to go now in the series. There was a thousand miles of racing left to go when we started today between us and the championship crown. Back down in the field at 13th place is Elio Castroneves. Delara powered by a Toyota. Castroneves started on the pole here. The pace of this race has been so blistering. 
Consider though what that means though in, in terms of how oh and that's Lazier. I think it's okay. My, They're also my, saying chapter has got a problem. So two cars <laughs> for a moment there we weren't sure if Schechter was going to get it stopped before he got to Lazier. Whoa. With Schechter clapping his hands like that, it's almost like nice job to the other driver. We'll have We're to see. We're yelling at them with the way he was driving. Some observers Are you think make that it out there? Are you gonna be able to stay out? this uh, might have been uh, caused in part by Vitor Mira. We'll take a look at a replay and see if we can figure it out. <laughs> Watch Jock and, and Schechter talking together and they're not happy with each other. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, here it is, Scott. Well, Thomas is getting a draft right now. Ah, a little bit of movement down, coming down on Mira. The car is getting very close. There we go, a little bit of a bump. You know something, and Thomas just followed Lazier up into the gray. Ended up getting into the gray himself. Probably thought they were both going to touch and really had nowhere to go with this. But here you go. Mears just going off the turn, moving up a little bit. The right rear tire touches the left front of Lazier's, pushes Lazier up into the wall, and he just grazes the wall, lost control of the car. And Schechter himself actually really has no course on either one of these guys here. Now you would want to roll off the throttle if you see these guys are going to touch, start to get down the lower side of the racetrack, but he's already up into this gray area here, Paul, and there is absolutely no grip up there in that gray. But with Vitor Mira, he was alongside and ahead of the cockpit of Jacques Lazier's car. You know, that is more like a racing incident. Jacques probably could have given him a little bit more room coming off the turn. Vitor obviously is going to move himself up. All right, let's go down the pits, Jamie Little. Paul, another tough day for Panther Racing, and Townsend Bell was out a little while ago. Good news is he's okay, but Townsend, what happened in your scenario? Just Scott Sharp again. I mean, it's his second race at Nazareth. He was two laps down. A spotter told me he was going to let me by. Sneva, my spotter, told me to go by. Then he turned in. We're out of the race. Here, going down the back straightaway, had a run, went to the outside. He just moved up right as I was next to him. I have nowhere to go, and uh, just ended our day. I mean... This is a long race, and, and guys start blocking. I mean, Tommy just went out because two guys are being stupid. This track's five lanes wide, and why two cars can't get down a back straightaway together is beyond me. Emotions are running high. Dr. Punch? Well, some of the cars coming on the pit road, Dario Franchitti had a good run going in the Arca X card, and I heard you say gearbox. What happened? Yeah, we've just basically uh, lost the gearbox under yellow, if you can believe that. <laughs> I don't know how that happened, but... Um... I feel bad because the car, the car actually wasn't that bad. We got shuffled back a bit, and then you get back with all the idiots who were trying to wheel bang and all sorts of stuff. Um, but, you know, I feel bad. Our Kang's car wasn't too bad, and um, probably a top five car. It's a hometown for a lot of our sponsors, and uh, we wanted to do a good showing today. But, again, gearbox problems, and, you know, on the yellow. I don't know how this, this gearbox is going to survive a road course. It's, uh, it's, but it's not the strongest part of the car, put it that way. A lot of frustration down here. You heard the pit stops a moment ago. Ryan Herta in both Penske cars on pit road, guys, here at lap 133. Well, we'll see. Uh, Tony Kanan's crew was all laid out for him and ready should he come in. And we kind of thought that he was going to head into the pits, but he did not. A.J. Foyt IV came in. And this is just going to be uh, top of the fuel. So Hornish, Elio Castroneves, Brian Herta, Adrian Fernandez, Darren Manning, Felipe Giafoni, and Scott Sharp all came into the pits under this caution for a little touch up at the end of the caution, a little further down. We'll be back. Buddy Rice is dead. Is the kid going to stay in front? We'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC station. Yeah, you talk about gamesmanship. This is within the team of Andretti Green Racing at the Delphi Indy 300. We are still under caution. They've been laid out constantly. They look like they're ready for a stop at any second. Well, I think, Paul, what they're thinking about doing is seeing how long this yellow is going to take place. And if this caution period is long enough, they'll come in, put tires and fuel in the car. They'll make it to the end. The guys that just pitted, I would have to tell you, are going to be cautious about maybe making it all the way. 
Hey guys, we just uh, just heard a moment ago down here in the Canaan and Weldon Pit, is they are doing some serious thinking. Is this uh, is this open wheel version of poker and bluff them and uh, and stare them down? But they're thinking now, talking on the radio. If they can get the lap 140, they may both pit and roll the dice on making it the rest of the way. But that's still three laps away. Yeah, you saw Fernandez come in, fuel only. He just topped the tank up, and he currently sits well down in 14th position. But maybe that top off is what we're saying, Scott, is enough to get him to the end. And that's certainly what both Weldon and Kanan are thinking about. It's a surprise that Buddy Rice is not thinking about that one. I think it is a stretch to make it to the end, but he's got to take a gamble. They're going to need a lot of yellow caution periods. The key on this race right now, Paul, is that it's going to be a power race, a horsepower race. If you're saving fuel, you don't have as much horsepower, you will not be able to lead this race, in my theory, by the end of the day, if you're going to try and play that game. Saturday, ABC's college football has a terrific regional doubleheader lined up at noon. The new look Huskers take on the Pitt Panthers, and then at 3.30, you'll see Oregon battle Oklahoma or Ohio State take on North Carolina State. On the West Coast, you'll see UCLA battle Washington at 4 Pacific. Ready to go back to the green. Giant crowd here today. Beautiful weather at Chicagoland Speedway. And it'll be Buddy Rice that'll bring his two competitors in the championship fight, fight Weldon and Kanan. So the whole championship fight is at the front of the field. Again, this is go for it time. This is as close as you're going to get to one another. Rice darts to the inside. Weldon works high. Here comes Kanan up the middle. The three championship players are right here at the front. Kanan can play it smart, Paul. He can sit back and finish third, knowing that he's got a bit of a cushion in the points over the next two races. Everybody closes in on the front runners. And they've gone yellow again, and this is a debris yellow. Fortunately, nothing against the wall. So, now, well, this helps I'm Adrian thinking everybody, Fernandez. yeah. You know, now you gotta play it very seriously. Whether you come in or not, you're getting a little bit closer. Fernandez still eight to 10 laps away from finishing this event with his last fuel load under my calculations. We'll have to see if the teams will gamble here and come in now. Your calculations. Boy, are you out on a limb. I am. <laughs> These so guys the need about another 10 <laughs> laps before the fuel window. So look at this wing it right here. Yeah. The right front wing right now with Mark Taylor's car. So some contact there with somebody. And this is the debris that the guys are picking up off the racetrack right now. They're reporting attendance today at 64,000 at Chicagoland. Boy, that's some uh, pretty serious bends up there. Yeah, the right front wing is taken off. You can see the rubber on the nose up on the front, so certainly he's actually made good contact with the car. Well, Panther racing two cars out, the only two cars in the team. Jamie Little? Well, it's the eighth DNF for Thomas Schechter. It was going really well for you. Tell us, though, what happened. Uh, there was just a lot of wheel banging. I'm not surprised that it didn't happen before, and uh, two guys in front of me were we're going pretty tough, and I think I don't want to blame anybody, but uh, I like to look at the onboard footage. But it looked just Lazier touched uh, Mira, and once I got up in the dirty air, there was nothing I could do. I just followed him all the way up. I know earlier today in the drivers' meeting, you guys were warned not to go three wide, and you were out there going three wide, but it's tough not to, right? Well, when you we know we we had to change an engine for qualifying, so 20 seconds, so I had a lot of work to do, and uh, that's the way you have to get by people. Let's go three wide, and I just have to. Thanks Chevrolet and Penzoil and, you know, apologize and, you know, hopefully we'll get it back together for the last two races. All right, Thomas Schechter, we'll see him back in California and Fontana. Guys? Yeah, hey, Jamie Little, the, uh, the uh, plan in the Panther team was to do some team changes to improve their luck. What happened? Well, Paul, we're trying to get the story right now. Thomas Schechter, <laughs> very frustrated. I guess we're getting ready for pits right now. The guys are on their way in. Todd? Interesting story. Vitor Mir was the first to show his cards, guys. Then Buddy Rice's teammate put his out. 
AG, 2R, Andretti Green guys, they didn't do anything until the last moment, then they also took us out. The word has been coming down. If the leader comes in, you come in. Here from Buddy Rice, Vitor Mira. This is going to be a quick one, but Paul, and like you and Scott said, very important on the fuel. Dan Weldon and Tony Kanan both top it off. Got to get it full of fuel. They're down and away. It's a race off of pit road. Now, who can save the most fuel to make it the rest of the way? Weldon gets out ahead of Rice, and Tony Kanan comes in behind Rice as they come off the pit road. But all three of them got uh, it got dropped down. The Penske cars took fuel only, and that's what puts them up at the point, followed by Manning and Dixon. So Toyota now first four positions in this field. With the length of this yellow right now, a few more laps underneath yellow, these guys will should have no problem going the remainder of the race with the fuel load they have on. Jamie, we were talking about the changes in the Panther team for the weekend. Yes, that's right. Doug Bowles, you know, I, I said, well, what are you guys going to do to change things up and turn your luck around? He said, well, Jamie, you know, we're going to swap positions and I'm going to go work with Townsend Bell instead of Thomas Schechter. He said, at this point, we're going to try anything to turn our luck around. And as you guys just saw, their luck isn't changing. And change managers and uh, it stays the same. Take a look at uh, what happened with uh, Marlboro Team Penske. Look at how they came rocketing out well ahead of everybody else. And of course, if you only take fuel, that'll do it for you. The Firestone tires are so good at this racetrack. The engineers have done such a great job. It's a new tire for the track here this weekend. I guess everybody's believing that the tires can run a stint and a half. Brian Herta, the only one of the four car and Reddy Green Racing team that has not scored a win this season. Uh, he last pitted on 133. He might be in a good position as well. Lined up behind the pace car. And he'll lead the field back to the green flag. It'll be Herta, Fernandez, Sam Hornish, Elio Castroneves, Hornish and Castroneves up there. Now the observers of the IRL are taking a hard look to make sure that Herta doesn't lag back on the restart. They've been a little bit worried about that. Already the uh, Johnny Rutherford and the pace truck, they're off the course. Control of the race goes over to Brian Herta for the final lap as they come back to the green flag, owing to his position as leader of the race. One key thing drivers will be trying to do, Paul, is to be gentle on the gearbox since they know a few drivers are out of this race so far with gearbox problems. Gearboxes get abused on a restart. Michael Andretti, what he may be doing is putting Herta out as the rabbit. We talked about a rabbit earlier. He's got uh, 10 laps less fuel than everybody behind him. Back to green flag. Here we go. The 26 of Weldon on the move. The look from Dixon. Herta got a great restart. Stays out in front, followed by Fernandez. There's Hornish. And there's the rest of the field. Oh. That's Ed Carpenter over there in the 52. It is a driver. When you drive along, you look over to the right hand side, you can see how much how many cars have been against the wall. As we go along, you just look at the wall on the right-hand side and all those black marks are there. Fernandez goes for the lead again, alongside Herta. Close action. Hornish isn't quite sure which one he wants to go with. We're showing you the lap since the last pits there. Now here comes Elio Castroneves. And the two-target Chip Ganassi car is just behind. Here comes Dan Weldon moving high in fourth place. Back on board with Darren Manning. For a second at least. It looks like the onboard went away. Hope the rest of the car is working.
Weldon takes the high side. One thing that uh, the IRL has told these guys is the second guy into an issue, it's his problem. If you're going to go three guys into a fight, the third guy into the fight is the one that has to keep everybody else safe. When two cars are side by side, the third guy that's trying to make that high line is responsible for making sure there's enough room for him there. So Adrian Fernandez is in front, followed by Brian Herta. Fuel strategy being played very carefully. Will it work out at the front of the field for Fernandez? And what will happen with Dan Weldon? for a while now he's been saying he thinks Rogers on his same fuel pattern as as uh, Scott Dixon and that last stop Dixon and Manning neither one took tires and that's how they got out ahead of AGR using it buddy they're right on you keep going you're the best of best at this Adrian let's do it Taylor didn't lose a lap by changing a wing there. That's pretty good. He's right up in the fight. Outside, keep going. Outside. Whoa. Outside, you got two cars. Outside. Right, outside. This One is what car. we need to have. Outside. On your front. You're clear on the rear. Whoa. Shit, there we go. Could see that one coming. Ah, uh, yeah. Yep. Could see that one coming. They worked on that one, didn't they? Mm -hmm. You all right there, Mark? You got a copy there, Mark? He's climbing out. He's all right. Wheels off. Wheels go down the track. He's all right, Vanessa. Say it again. Just finished saying how well he was running too, Taylor. Well, you, apparently you were wrong. Yeah, what's wrong with that? Great shot of the steering wheel he threw out on the inside. Yeah, that's four thousand dollars running down the dam. Well, the car should just come out again, and there is a reason why. Mark Taylor's car, thirteen, and the fourteen car of AJ Foyt, the fourth. Uh, tangled. You could actually see it coming for a while. The cars are on the pit road just because the track is so blocked up here. They want to try and get that cleaned as fast as they can. Here it is, Scott. You see the green and white car right there in your screen, actually. Foyt the fourth coming up a little bit too aggressively coming off the turn. Now, this car almost started to go on an angle, Paul. I'm not so sure that maybe something didn't go wrong with the car because he went up there and just collected Mark Taylor. Yeah, we've got another angle here. It was a pretty sudden move. See, there he goes, and he maybe didn't have an indication from his spotter that Mark was up there. In any case, both coming off a of turn four, doing a 215 miles an hour. That impact against the wall, and then with all those flames going right over Mark Taylor right now, that is a scary ride, let me tell you. Take you a look at the safer wall there, which helps this, doesn't it? Yeah, on your right-hand side, you can actually see the safer barrier that they use. It's a steel and foam energy reduction, and you can see it right there on the top also. It's just corrugated steel with some foam behind it, and there's a space in between. And here it is right there. There's the, there's the corrugated steel right there. These are all the pieces of foam, and this is the actual cement retaining wall that is actually used around all the race circuits. You can see where the retaining wall here meets up with the 
safer barrier. An idea started by Tony George and the IRL uh, that has uh, been followed by everybody and has really helped in motorsports. So, what happens now? Will Adrian stay in front? We'll see. Now, starting Monday, the benefactor will hand over $1 million. He's just looking for the player who has what it takes to step up and take it. Who will pass his test for success? The benefactor premieres Monday on ABC. Now, Adrian Fernandez is out front. Brian Herta in second place. Uh, Jerry Punch, what's going on down there? Well, Paul, Brian Herta may be the benefactor of this yellow flag because he had pitted on lap 133, and George Klotz had made the call. And they were going to try to roll the dice, although they believe they would have run out of fuel with maybe four and a half to five left to go. Now let me ask you, as he's listening to his driver, George, with this yellow, does it help you? Can you make it? Absolutely. I mean, we'll give as many yellow miles as we can here, and then uh, it'll definitely help us at the end of the race about how aggressive we can get on the fuel at the uh, end of the race. You were going to try anyway, right? You were going to roll the dice? Yeah, sure. Why not? All right, George Cloach is going to roll the dice. They thought they were going to be four, four and a half, five laps short. Now they can make it with this yellow. They may be the benefactor and may just get a chance to win one. That'd be four cars winning an Andretti Green Staple. Guys? Yeah, there's the seven, the XM car of Herta, and there's Elio Castro Nevis, who now has been actually eliminated from the battle in the championship. It was a reach on a mathematics starting the starting the day, but now the points have come in such a way that Elio Castro Nevis is out of the fight, leaving Dan Weldon. Buddy Rice and Tony Kanan. The championship fight, no doubt, will go on as you look at the wrecked car of A.J. Foyt IV. We are yellow because of this incident, a big one that put a lot of parts all up and down the track. We've got two angles for you. The green and white car on the bottom of the screen, you saw it come up and collect Mark Taylor, as we mentioned before. Again, you can see the point of impact going into that safer barrier. And just there, you can see how much destruction happens on these cars, Paul. They're built as a deformable structure to absorb the impact. So by the time the energy gets to the driver inside the cockpit, he doesn't see the same impact that the body parts or the suspension pieces do on the outside of the yeah, car. Yeah, but Taylor had a face full of fire there for some time, too. There's where the helmet and the suit come into play. Absolutely. A three-layer fireproof suit, a fireproof helmet, a balaclava. But you'll tell you something. Even when you're in a crash, no matter what it is, it's scary. Fire just adds an extra opponent to it. So at the front of the field, still under caution, they'll come back Adrian Fernandez, then Brian Herta. Vitor Mera is third. Weldon is fourth. And Tony Kanan is fifth. And all of them have a shot at winning. We'll be back after this and a word from your ABC station. Welcome back to the Delphi Indy 300 at Chicagoland Speedway in Joliet, Illinois, as we just saw a little while ago. Anthony Foyt, the fourth big wreck. Grandpa, what is your perspective? It was a great day coming in here today. It was a great day, and it was a great day all day long. And, you know, we had that little shunt earlier where the, they checked up in front of him, and, and the 51 car got into him, and then the 13 car got into his left rear. Everything looked good. We changed the tires, sent him back out, and he was still running you know, up in the 212s, 13s, and everything was good, and then I think maybe something broke. These cars are so fragile, they can't stand a little bump at all, and I think something broke on the suspension because all of a sudden the car just went straight, and the poor boy in the 13 car, he just had nowhere to go, and I'm just glad both of them's all right. We're going to get a word with Mark Taylor here in a moment. Thank you, AJ. Anthony, great day going. What happened out there? Your grandpa said it looked like something might have broken on the car. Yeah, we got into a bang up the few few laps before that in turn one so right front left rear so I mean you never know something could have happened just I uh, couldn't all of a sudden the car wanted to go up the track and just uh, unfortunately the 13 car was there so we had a good day going but it ended a little short well I have to ask you how do you feel running up there with the big boys started six today it felt good you know we were running up there all day and had a good car where we could stay up there so just unfortunate but we got to go to California and do the same thing Tough break for A.J. Foyt Racing. Guys, we're going to get a word with Mark Taylor as soon as he gets released. Yeah, it's good to see that uh, four is at least out and in good shape because that was a pretty grinding accident. We want to update you on uh, this race thus far while the cleanup continues. On the green flag, it was, of course, Elio Castro Nevis on the pole, and he led the field out. Thomas Schechter 
was back in 22nd place and just bullied his way up to seventh by lap 25. The Penske boys uh, got to fighting among themselves. Catherine Nevis and Hornish Touch. Take a look at this. This has been uh, what it's gone throughout the day. Touch, touch, touch. And believe it or not, most of them kept it off the wall. There's Townsend Bell. Got forced up to the wall. And then on lap 130, Jacques Lazier and Vitor Mira down on the inside. And they touch. And that sends both Lazier and Thomas Schechter into the wall. And then Fernandez, Herta up front. And then here is that last accident. Taylor and Foyt, they get together and into the wall. Don't forget that when the race is over, uh, you can actually chat with the winner. Log on to ESPN.com and search the IRL, and you'll be chatting with the winner as yet. We don't even have any idea who the winner is going to be on this thing. Vitor Mira heads on to the pit road. See what this is. Todd Harris. Well, Vitor Mira is reporting that he had a flat right rear tire, so we're going to take this opportunity to get him some fresh four. No fuel, though, this time, but this is going to be costly for him. Thumbs up all the way around, and they're going to hold him up for just a little longer. And this has turned into a almost a debacle because they're having all kinds of problems getting that right front off. Actually, right now they're having a problem with the air gun. The first air gun did not work, and you saw the right front tire changer throw the air gun back, go back to a spare, Todd, and now it looks like service is complete. They are being careful. That long extra look to make sure everything was okay. So Mira back in the fight. Adrian Fernandez, number five. Is it possible that we're going to see two wins on mile and a half track by Adrian? This fall on ABC, they survived the crash, but can they survive the unknown? Lost premieres Wednesday, September 22nd at 8, 7 central and only on ABC. Jamie Little. Very scary scene there just a few moments ago. Mark Taylor, Anthony Foyt, the fourth coming together. Look at this helmet. We saw flames coming from both cars over his head. Mark, are you okay? And did you sustain any burns? I'm fine. It was just a, a flash fire from, I don't know, the oil or something. And um, it's just one of those incidents when you're, when you're going at this speed, it's going to, when you hit that hard, it's going to, it's going to do something to the car. It's pretty much destroyed it. So uh, very disappointing. We're very happy with, that, with the way that the car was. We're, uh, moving forward all the way through, um, just had a, a lot of people from University Loft and they're obviously enjoying it and it's just a shame not to be able to finish the thing. Did you and Anthony have any words afterwards? Um, it's one of those things, he, his car was pushing it looked like um, and I don't know whether it was because of his car or he didn't know I was there but he just squeezed up, squeezed me into the wall and, um, and that was the end of the race, there's not, not much place I can go um, when, that, when that gap between the wall and the car on the inside closes up that quickly. Well, we're glad to see Mark Taylor's okay. He's got a little ice on his hand there. He'll heal up, and again, we'll see him in Fontana. Guys? Well, that's good news for Mark Taylor. Look, they're down on their hands and knees scrubbing the track to make sure they have everything off of it as the field goes by, and we continue under caution. This, though, I think is setting up a fairly amazing possibility. Consider Sam Hornish a year ago in the finish here at Chicagoland. Incredibly intense. Sam Hornish Jr. is nosed in front by a half a car length, but Herta has the inside line. I got on the bottom and just got down on the white line as low as I could. Sam Hornish Jr. trying to get the advantage on Herta. They are dead even. Now Hornish starts to pull in front. I came off a four, and Brian kept trying to move me up the track, and I'm like, I'm like, what's he doing? He's just going to let somebody underneath him. It's a near carbon copy of last year's race. Herta will go to the high side and three wide. 
I raised my fist and I was like, okay, because I, I knew I had him beat. And then I looked down and I could see Scott in there. I think you see all the pictures of Sam going like this, which I thought was quite funny. And I thought, boy, I hope I beat him because I'd hate to be the guy in the three wide finish with my hand up thinking I won the race when the guy down on the bottom was ahead of me. Hornish, Dixon, and Herta go three wide at the line, touch wheels, and Hornish wins it by a nose. Well, Scott, I'm thinking we may have something like that here as soon as we can get it back to green flag racing. Well, you know, all these guys are rested up, Paul. We don't have any fuel concerns. The tires are going to be fresh. It's not like they're going to be at the end of their stint. And you know something? These guys know there's some work being done on the track, and they look up and go, I've got to have myself up there. I've got to have myself in a position so I can be there for that fight for the last five laps because that's what this thing's going to come down to. The average margin of victory at uh, races here. IRL IndyCar Series, especially at this track, but everywhere, has had some just incredible racing and incredible finishes. They're still trying to get this track clean. It's messed all down the front straightaway. There's Roger Penske communicating uh, with his driver. He owns the cars of Elio Casper Devis and Sam Hornick. As soon as we're done here, we're going to be sending you out to Los Angeles and the WNBA. And Terry Gannon is there along with the crew, ready to give us the coverage. What's up, Terry? problems out there. Uh, the WNBA though of course follows our coverage here from Chicagoland. Sacramento takes on Los Angeles. They're back to running the field through the pits because they've uh, still got some massive amounts of oil and the IRL officials know what I think we all sense is that they're going to need a pristine racetrack when it comes time to go back to racing and you can't have anything slick anywhere at all. So they've got a long line of oil dry up in turn four. Another line down in turn one. Herta Fernandez, this is the battle just before we went yellow, and they've been back and forth. This, of course, before the yellow flag, lap 148. But, Scott, as you point out, everybody has fuel, everybody's rested, and the way we've seen them run, when they go back to green, while we'll be looking at the lead, everything that happens behind that is going to matter. Well, you know, you're going to have to pick the right partner if indeed you can, because that's how we're going to see is stuff like this, Paul. I'm excited because not only will it be two and three wide, their buddies might even make it four wide coming up to the finish line. So Fernandez in front, Ryan Herta in second. Jerry Punch, what's going on down there now? Well, guys, here in the XM Satellite Radio pits for Brian Herta, they're talking about uh, how, how de it's deja vu, history repeating itself. The last time Brian Herta won a race was last July at Kansas City on a mile-and-a-half racetrack. And on that day, he pitted on lap 133 and went the final 67 laps on fuel and had to drive it in the final few laps to win the race. Today, on a mile-and-a-half track, he pitted on lap 133 and is going to run the final 67. They hope it's history repeating itself all over again, guys. Well, I hope they get it right for personal reasons. Part of that calculation being done by my son. <laughs> I saw his math in fifth grade, so I know what he's capable of. I, you saw George uh, turn down there and look. They, uh, the calculations that everybody does is uh, fairly extensive and remarkable. Of course, they do that all up and down the pit road. We're waiting for them to get this course clean. It's looking like they're getting very close. And when we come back, we should be ready for a green flag and a sprint to the finish.
and he'll lead the field back to the green flag. It'll be Herta, Fernandez, Sam Hornish, Elio Castroneves, Hornish and Castroneves up there. Now the observers of the IRL are taking a hard look to make sure that Herta doesn't lag back on the restart. They've been a little bit worried about that. Already the uh, Johnny Rutherford and the pace truck, they're off the course. Control of the race goes over to Brian Herta for the final lap as they come back to the green flag, owing to his position as leader of the race. One key thing drivers will be trying to do, Paul, is to be gentle on the gearbox since they know a few drivers are out of this race so far with gearbox problems. Gearboxes get abused on a restart. Michael Andretti, what he may be doing is putting Herta out as the rabbit. We talked about a rabbit earlier. He's got uh, 10 laps less fuel than everybody behind him. Back to green flag. Here we go. The 26 of Weldon on the move. Of course, we'll head out to Los Angeles for the WNBA as soon as the run is done here. But we're setting up for a finish. Looks like it's going to be about 20 laps or so, and it should be really something to see. There's still an emergency vehicle down on the entry to the pit road in turn four. And next time by, Johnny Rutherford should pull off in the pace truck, and that should turn the field over to Adrian Fernandez. And then who knows what's going to happen. Fernandez, Herta, Weldon, Kanan, Manning, Castroneves, Rice, Dixon, Sharp, and Hornish Jr., the top 10 in the line. Who knows where that's going to end up? Everybody has plenty of fuel. They're rested. They're ready to go. And, Paul, we've seen a, a major delay here in just getting the track ready, but it's important to note, even when they're circulating around under yellow, Vitor Mir ended up with a puncture on his right rear tire. So that just goes to prove that there's a lot of debris on this because of the accident, and the IRL officials want to be absolutely sure the track is completely clean because when these cars get up to speed at over 200 miles an hour, you cannot afford a cut in the tire. Yeah, and at 215 like they've been running here. <laughs> You can't have anything out on the racetrack. They're very good at keeping track of that. Fernandez takes control of the field. Brian Herta lags back a bit. Dan Weldon moves up on Herta. Now with Herta lagging back behind there right now, I'm sure the IRL officials are looking at that. That's something that's not allowed. You watch from Tony Kanan's seat, the leader in the points. Fernandez takes him across the line. They're clean into one. Manning goes down low looking for some room. And you saw what looked like a lot of smoke, but that's actually just the dust that they went across from the accident area, which is the oil dry in turn Whoa. one. Andretti Green Racing goes three wide. Not what Michael Andretti wants oh. to see, Paul. Heard it down on the inside. The 26 of Weldon in the middle and Kanan up on the high side. They stretch it out now. 20 laps to go to the finish. Brian Herta is being very aggressive, the driver in second. I know it's his teammates behind him right now, but Paul, he's the only guy that's not won this year in that camp, and that's what he's looking at and thinking about right now, is leading this race. Well, if he's able to do it, it'll be the first team in history that's had four cars win in a single season. Whoa! the Penske cars up high there. That looked like Hornet. Great to see Toyota come back into the game here with some of their updates. We expected it. Nazareth at 9.54 as they call it. But I have to correct myself because last year I put my decimal point in the wrong place a couple weeks ago. Uh, and they're trying to do fuel calculation math here today. There we That's go. great. Under Weldon. Weldon. He goes way high. Herta tries the middle line. They're both trying to catch Adrian Fernandez. Weldon makes that high line work for the moment. Now Tony Kanan tries to poke a nose into it. And Weldon falls back to third. 
Buddy Rice is up working now on the 11 car of Canaan. And then there's the rest of the gang. Look how close that is, 215, 18 miles an hour top speed. I would tell they're almost touching, Paul. You need a lot of trust and a lot of confidence to do that. Circulating at over 213 miles an hour. You know, those intervals, while interesting, are fairly meaningless. There Whoa, they go, touch between Kanan and Rice. Kanan started to go on the high side. He's been down on the bottom all day long. Probably wanted to see if his car would work up top. I think Rice surprised him, Paul. Yeah, both of them, though, kept it under control. Oh, oh and this time, no. That's Rice upside down on the back stretch. He flipped up, got the car sideways. It got nosed higher in the air. Hey, buddy, can you hear us there? Car is not even stopped, Paul, and the safety crew is on the scene. No answer, though. Manning, he's involved. You saw him reach out of the cockpit. So now we're waiting on word from Rice. The safety team is there. They're working. And down in the Ray Hall Letterman pits. Remember Rice going for it tight at Pike's Peak. That's Buddy's dad walking away there. And then Scott Remke, a team manager on the scooter. Interesting to note that Bobby Ray Hall is not here this weekend. He is actually up in Watkins Glen, New York, running his vintage car. Probably watching this on television. They want to get this car. That's Bud. That's his dad. Walking over uh, back into the uh, paddock area. Now, we're we going to try to get it right side up. We didn't have any communication, but Paul, you have to remember that the antenna is on the top of the car, probably has ground the antenna away, and they probably know that Buddy is okay underneath it, but he cannot make contact with the pit lane. Chip Ganassi watches Darren Manning out of the car. He appears to be all right. Now they're getting that car rolled right side up. The uh, word from race control is that uh, he's okay. Now, as a driver, I will tell you previously, the one thing that he's thinking about right now is not about injury. It's about that the championship is gone. So they get the car down, right side up, very gently. And there's Buddy. Whoa! Buddy Rice is okay. Buddy Rice just pops up and out of the car. So Buddy Rice is all right. He climbs out of the car after they gently turn it back right side up. Here's what happened. Just at the beginning of your screen, you can see that he got his left rear touched by the right front of Darren Manning. As soon as the two tires touch Paul, the rubber, then it just connects quickly and sends the car into the air. See, Buddy was just starting on his way down off of the turn. Probably did not know that Darren was there. Probably more so on Buddy's line fault there, coming down a little bit too quickly. As we watch from the rear section here right now, you can see that Buddy being on the right-hand side just started to bring the car down to protect that inside line and ended up connecting with Darren Manning. Yeah, Sam Hornish had to go down low on the inside to get around the car. There's Buddy sliding sideways, gets kicked up in the air. And you saw the front of Darren Manning's car almost get lifted up also. And taking a look at it, you saw Tony Kanan going through the middle of this. So this is onboard Kanan, the two participants right ahead. You know, and you know, Tony Kanan, after watching this, will be on the radio and going, boys, you would be amazed at what I just saw. Tribute, though, to the strength of the cars as we watch from Manning's car. The right front there of Manning, and here you see Rice coming across, crossing him. And then he just ends up getting the air underneath the car, lifting it up. And here goes, buddy, up and over. You think Darren Manning didn't go, holy moly? Or something of that sort. Unbelievable footage as Buddy Rice, second time this year, first time he did it at Pikes Peak on, a, uh, on the start. This is on a restart where he got caught out. 
This time, though, it flipped the car upside down. On the One. low side, making some great ground up there. And see how quickly he was going and catching up to that group? That is an incredible shot. Yeah, even Chip Ganassi, uh, they've got monitors, of course, in their pits. He finds that to be fairly remarkable as well. Pretty unbelievable stuff, but the good news is both drivers are okay. Don't forget, coming up next, it will be the WNBA Sacramento against Los Angeles. Uh, we're at Chicagoland Speedway, the IRL IndyCar Series, and have just seen some of the most amazing footage I think I've ever seen. Buddy Rice loses control, comes down to the inside and across the nose of Darren Manning's car and flips into the air, lands upside down, flies along the wall, slides up against it, and then off the wall. And when they flip the number 15 over, very gently, I might add, Buddy Rice just climbs up and out of the car. Jamie Little? Very scary moments there. We are watching Chip Ganassi's driver, Darren Manning, right there. Chip, let's watch it on the screen again. What were your thoughts when you saw that? Well, I mean, it just, you know, obviously, Buddy made an abrupt move down, in the, down low. I think it took Darren to caught him off guard. Uh, you know, when I see that, when I see that going over the top there, I just think of, you know, thank God we have a lot of people to think about safety in this business because uh, today it paid off, obviously. Well, thank goodness there, everybody's okay. Scary moments, but unbelievable camera shots, guys. Yeah, and I'll echo what Chip Ganassi says there. Because they do think about it, and they build them well, Buddy Rice survives, just hops out of the cockpit. And Chip would know, Paul, because he was involved in that Michigan accident oh, many Zer years ago yeah. where they ended up touching much the same thing coming off of turn two, going in through the infield, both of them flying through the air, cars destroyed. It's any wonder that both of them had to actually live. Yeah, back at the, at the old Michigan 500 when Ganassi was still driving. Touched wheels with Al Unzer Jr. coming off at two, and they both went cartwheeling through the air. This was... Uh, the car is being taken back. This was a few moments ago. Buddy Rice, they flipped the car over and he hopped right up and out. They, of course, had talked to him before, knew he was generally okay, and just wanted to make sure that they didn't jar anything loose when they flipped the car over. So Buddy Rice, Darren Manning, both all right. Some phenomenal footage and an amazing car that survives something like that. We'll be back, still looking for a finish after this word from our ABC station. Back at the Delphi Indy 300, still under caution because of the incident involving Buddy Rice and Darren Manning. And Scott Goodyear, you sound... Uh, you found a most interesting shot in all of this. It's going to be a sprint to the finish and a very short one at that. But let's go back and take a look, if we can, at Buddy Rice when he did flip because everything stretches in the cockpit. Very difficult to see as we'll just stop it right now. You can actually see the car in the roll bar area there. And then you can see Buddy's helmet right up in this area here, how far he's stretched. And we'll roll it from here. And as soon as the car comes down, you see Buddy's head just jar. As soon as the car hits the ground, and right there, his head goes back inside the cockpit, and he is in for one bumpy, bumpy ride. See how the top of the roll bar compression's right there? I can tell you, Buddy is counting his blessings right now. Oh, what a catch, too, to see something like that. Nice going, Scott. Jamie Little. Well, Darren Manning was working his way up, and then one of the scariest moments we've seen all year. What was it from your perspective? Yeah, I mean... You know, we're just running in such close proximity that out there, and uh, I don't know if Buddy had to check down on me from the from the car that was on the outside of him. I thought we were we were running pretty uh, pretty all right. I mean, the cars just move around so much, and we're running so close, especially at the end of the race there like that. It's just a shame for for both of us really, and uh, just sorry for Buddy. You know, it's not nice uh, having to see the, the the car flip over you like that, but uh, it's glad to see we're, but he's all right and I am. You're okay, 100%. Yeah, yeah no problem. Buddy seems okay as well. Great news, guys. Buddy Rice is still inside. Take it away. And we're going green. It is Adrian Fernandez that leads the field down. Brian Hurd immediately moves to the outside, looking for a chance to get Fernandez. 
They bottle up just behind Weldon and Kanan. They go side by side into two. The two Penske cars are closing on the back of this as well. Scott Dixon, Vitor Mira goes down on the inside of Dixon. You look from Dixon's car now. That's Mira right ahead. An absolute guarantee, Paul. These guys will be flat on the gas with five laps left to go. Hernandez, Herta, Canan. Now Elio Castro Neves trying to get in on Canan. Weldon closing the door right there on Castro Nevis. Four to go. Onto the back stretch again. Mira puts the left side down below the white line. Gets alongside Dixon. Hernandez still the dominant power in here. Fernandez out in front. So is that where Herta wants to be or where he's just put? Right now, with as close as these cars are, if you can be in the front, stay low. That's where I'd want to be. It used to be that second place was maybe the place to be. Not enough power to pass these days with these new three-liter engines, Paul. Tony Kanan tries to move on Herta now. Two to go. Adrian pulls away slightly on the back stretch. Mira and Hornish go side by side. Dixon down low on Mira. White flag comes out, a mile and a half to go at Chicagoland. Adrian Fernandez looks very powerful. Down the back stretch. Don't forget all the problems that Adrian Fernandez had today. But here is Herta. Herta makes no his worries. move. Keep Herta's pushing. on the high you side, but he's going to have to go further, and it isn't going to work. Adrian Fernandez has taken Good his second win, win in the IRL. What a run, and Brian Herta gave it everything he had right there at the last, trying to get high on him. Wisely, though, Adrian kept right down the middle. So his second win in the IRL comes in only his 13th stop start, and he moves up sixth in the points. John Ward, the engineer on the team, accepting the congratulations. Now what about Buddy Rice? He's okay, isn't he, Jamie? That's right. That's the great news. Unbelievable. Buddy, we saw you upside down. We could see your helmet on the pavement. What was going through your mind at that moment? Uh, I don't know, really. I was just hoping for it to stop. I didn't know at what point I was going to stop at, and... Uh... What was going on, all I had was sparks and stuff flying right by me the whole time. But once it came to a stop, I mean, the safety crew was there. I mean, I think well, it only was a second or so before I, I saw the safety guys there. So everything was good on the, on the Delphi side. And obviously the Panos G-Force held up. Best news we've seen all year is when you popped out of that car. Glad to see you're all right. Yeah, thanks. All right, guys. There's your winner, Adrian Fernandez. We'll look at the finish one more time. And by the way, in doing that, Buddy Rice is now eliminated from the battle of the championship. There are only two left. And it's Tony Kanan and Dan Weldon as we go to the final two races of the season. First at California Speedway in Fontana and then on to Texas Motor Speedway for the final race. And the battle is within one team. Tony Kanan and Dan Weldon will battle for this championship. So Adrian Fernandez has taken the win. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com. Search ABC Sports. Coming up next, WNBA. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports Championship Television. Hey, Adrian has about got his stuff off here, and we can turn around and... Uh... All right. Hey, Doc. Yeah, they had a big sign down here. It's "Si se puede." Yeah, it's I, huge in uh, in Mexico for soccer. It means "Can you do it today?" So exactly, you might ask him. Exactly. "Si se puede."
Tim. Well, the shootout at Chicago Land is history, and the Delphi Indy 300 goes to popular Mexican driver Adrian Fernandez, your second win in the Indy Racing League. Congratulations, Adrian. I'm so excited. I, I tell you, I had the best team. We we broke the uh, the weight jacker in the in our second pit stop. The high jack, uh, the the, the uh, weight jacker or whatever. The thing that puts the car up and. Uh, uh, we, we had to do the, the, the pit stops manually, and uh, we never gave up. We have a tremendous car, and uh, I tell you, this is the best team out there. I'm very happy. Those final laps, you had three Andretti green cars trying to swap you there with two laps to go. I know, it wasn't easy because uh, I knew they were strong. We, take, we took again some chances like in Kentucky for the race, and uh, it paid off. I, I'm telling you, I'm thrilled with the guys. Everybody has been working really, really hard. This was a fantastic race for us. and. You know, two races, winning two races, winning uh, four races were is fantastic. But it's it's all to these guys. It's uh, they're unbelievable. Adrian Fernandez, his second win here in 2004.